Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about loop control as well as error handling. So two uh, commands that you have seen in MATLAB and C++ and they also exist in uh, Python are break and continue. Where break simply breaks out of the loop and completely terminates the loop and continue just goes to the next iteration of the loop. So let's say here you have this vector and uh, you start from i of negative 1 because you want to keep increasing i. So you say as long as i i is less than the length of this vector, which in this case it is 10, go ahead and add 1 to i i. So right off the bat i i becomes 0. So you have the entry number 0, index 0. And if that value, mode 5, is 0, so the number is divisible by 5, just go ahead and skip it. Don't do anything. Don't write anything, nothing. Just go to the next iteration of the while loop. On the other hand, if that number is a multiple of 2, completely break out of the loop. So as soon as this number reaches, this uh, numbers, they reach an even number, a multiple of 2, the operation would stop. Now, if it's not a multiple of 5 or 2, then go ahead and show the value. So it goes to 1, and 1 is not multiple of 2 and 5. It shows it. Goes to 3. It's not a multiple of them. Shows it. Goes to 5. 5 is a multiple of 5, so it skips and not going to show, not going to write 5. When it reaches to 8, 8 is a multiple of 2, so it's going to break. And it's never going to go over anything else. So the only numbers you're going to see are 1 and 3 if I run this while loop. And here you can see that. Right? So continue is, as I said, to skip over the rest of the operation in the loop. And basically going back to the first line. And break means just terminate the whole thing. Right, so here, if I make it to be a multiple of what? A multiple of 13, then it goes all the way until it reaches 26, and it is going to show all of the numbers except multiples of 5. So 5 is going to be skipped as well as what? 20, and then when it reaches 26, it is going to do the num, uh, it is going to break the loop. So look here. You see, now it shows all of the numbers, again, except for 5 and 20. It skipped them and reaches 26, and guess what? 26 is uh, the break, so it's not going to go to 30, what? 2. So this is what? This is break and continue. Now, about error handling, I want to show you uh, three methods for handling errors. One is the one that you have seen me using in previous videos is the try and accept. In uh, other uh, languages, we say instead try and catch. Here is try and accept and throwing an exception. And here I have a vector. And in this vector, I'm going to divide any number by 10 by any number in the loop, in the, sorry, in the vector. And I'm going to show the result. So it's going to show the result of 10 over each number. And if that operation leads to an error, like what? Like when I get here, 10 over 0, I'm going to get an error. So instead of throwing an error at me, it says, hey, division by 0 not allowed, right? So I know I'm going to have a 0. And then for that case, instead of stopping everything, I would say, hey, go ahead and show a, an error message, but do not terminate the program. Show me as something written in blue, not in red. That's basically what it does. And you can see that here. Look. So 10 over 1 is 10, 10 over 3, 10 over 5, 10 over 8, 10 over 9. You see all of these numbers. Then it reaches to 10 over 0. And instead of terminating the for loop and giving me an error in red, it just shows this message. And then when it reaches here, it shows 10 over 18. So if you want to avoid getting the red errors and run the program anyways, you can put the parts that you think they might produce error under try and a solution for them under what? Under accept. So let me add that. Put the code that 
might produce error here. And then what here you say put a solution or message for that error in this section, in the accept section. Okay, so you want the code to run anyways, even if there is an error, don't generate it. Show me that there is an error, but don't terminate the program. This is called try and accept, which is a very beautiful structure, but it might lead to unwanted uh, consequences if we don't really figure out what kind of error we have. In, in this case, it's very simple. I just have 10 over zero, right? So why do we typically do that? Because uh, we really want this part of the code to run and whatever is followed, uh, whatever is uh, basically f after this uh, try and accept, we also want that part of the code to run too. Right? If uh, this breaks here, then the rest of the code will not run. So this is a method to continue running through the code even if there is an error. The other two methods of error handling, one is to show an error message. So let's say here I'm asking the user to give me a positive real number and I give you back the square root of it. But the user goes ahead and just to mess up with me, they give me a negative number. I'm asking for a positive. They just want to see how good my code is. They give me a negative number. So I say, if A is negative, raise a value error and say value should be non-negative. So if the user is giving me a bad value, go ahead and raise an error. What kind of error? A value error. So you see here, it is asking for what? Enter a positive number. I said, no, I want to give you a negative three. Look what happens. You see, this time it really generates an error message. And what is that message? You see? It says value should be what? Non-negative. So this raise value is really an actual error message. But the message is under your control. You can control it yourself. What kind of error? You tell the user what kind of error you are uh, basically... Um, you have caused. The other method that you can handle errors is using the assert method, which is a beautiful method that I also showed you in, uh, I guess, MATLAB and C++. And here you are assuming uh, some condition for some value, some inputs. And if that condition is not satisfied, then you can go ahead and basically uh, if it's if the inter if the entry the value is good you can show whatever you want if the entry is not good the assert command automatically will terminate the program for you and it says assertion failed so what do i do i ask for the same thing and this time assert says hey assume that a is non negative okay now if the assertion is good if this condition is satisfied i'm going to show you the square root if this condition is not satisfied, guess what? The assert will stop the program with an error message. Look here. So here I say negative 2. Look. And it's the assert that will generate what? The error. You see? Assertion error. A should be non-negative. And clearly the assertion failed here. So... The type of error that you want to show to the user is under your control as well. And uh, again, this command automatically will stop the code. So you say assert. After assert with the space, you provide your condition. And then separated by a comma, you provide the string to show what? To show the error message. So raise a value error, assert, and try and accept. These are three ways of error handling and continue and break are two methods of loop control. So hopefully this video was useful to you and I will see you in my next lecture. Thank you.